Welcome to another episode of Ultimate JavaScript Tutorials. In this episode, we are going to dive deep into sizing and positioning the Angular Material snack bar. So the snack bar is kind of interesting in that um, most of our components in Angular Material will be under the root, but the snack bar actually is not. So that makes it challenging to style. Um, basically, we wind up having to flip a flag in order for our styling in our component to be applied to the snack bar. Um, so anyway, we're going to dive deep into the DOM, explore some of these classes. We'll see, of course, we can vertically and horizontally position the snack bar with some of the props that are available on the open method um, for the snack bar. However, we can actually really precisely style it wherever we want on the screen by targeting some of these classes. So we'll dive into that. Also, if we want to make this a full width um, snack bar, then we also have to dive into these classes. So uh, we'll explore all of these things. Let's go take a look at the code. All right, so here we are in the code. I've got a little bit of code already in place. It's a really simple snack bar. All I've got is this button in my template and it has this on click function on it. And that on click function is right here. And if you've ever used the snack bar, you've probably seen this. A very common function with our snack bar is that we call the open function. So with the snack bar, we don't actually have a template for it. There, you could, if you wanted to, you could use, I think it's, the open with template method. Um, but in this setting, I'm not gonna have a template. I'm just going to pass in some text, in this case, the word test. And so that's the text of my snack bar, um, the word, the, the string close. So that gives me a close button with this text and then some other options. In this case, a class, which uh, the prop name is panel class and horizontal and vertical position. And I'm actually not going to use this panel class. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to pass in a class and then you can target it over here in your SCSS file. However, before we go into the SCSS file, I want to mention one very important thing. So normally our styling is encapsulated for our component and it does not get raised to the global level. However, that will not work for a snack bar. So as I mentioned in the intro, the snack bar is not in the root of the app. And so you need to actually set this encapsul encapsulation, view encapsulation, none value here within your component. And um, just doing that will make you able to use your, your snack bar um, SCSS file. I'm calling mine position to snack bar. So if you don't do that, then what you have to do is you have to come into your styles SCSS. You can see some styling I have from a different um, post that I wrote about the snack bar about how to add color styling. Um, but then I discovered this cool little trick um, where you turn the encapsulation off so you can actually use your SCSS file here. So what we're going to do is um, the first thing we need to do is we need to understand our positioning, our horizontal and vertical positioning. So like I said, I'm going to strip this panel class off because it's not actually necessary for this video, but know that it exists because it is useful for doing things like color styling, background color, and so on. Anyway, let's take a look at our app again, and let's see how the app bar is currently positioned. Um, I've got just the default horizontal and vertical positioning values um, but what we can do is we can see, okay, here's our topmost div um, within our, well, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but um, the topmost div, that's really just our app bar, excuse me, our snack bar. Uh, I knew I was going to say app bar eventually, but anyway, what is also interesting is we have this div right above it that has the flex display on it. So that's very important to know about. Um, we can see that we've got justify content, we've got align items. So if I start fiddling around with some of these things, let's see what happens. We can do flex start or flex end, align items, we can do center. So you can see how we can control the, um, the horizontal alignment with this justify content, the vertical alignment with this align items. So let me go back over here and um, what we can see is that our position values are actually just setting those the justify content and the align items. They're just setting um, those CSS values and that's how these props work. So I can show that off by saying, let's say flex end here. Oops, we don't actually want that. We want to use values like um, instead of center, let's see, let's see if it'll just tell us. It's I think it's start and end, um, but it's actually ultimately setting the flex values. I'll say end. Um, if you're ever unsure of what values are possible, I'm here in um, VS code and I can just click into the type file so I can see the values here start center end left and right 
So you might be wondering what the difference between start and end are. Um, there's some languages, literally like spoken languages or written languages, they're written from left to right. And so that's why we might see a start and an end instead of a left and a right. So of course this is all in English and so it's not really particularly different. So I'm gonna use, um, I could use right or I could use end. So I've got that at end right now. And for a vertical position, let's go ahead and set that to center. So let's go back over here to our app and looks like it does not like one of my positions here. It, so it doesn't like center. Oh yeah, so this is one of the challenges is that even though horizontal position had all kinds of values, the vertical position does not. So let's drill into that vertical position. It only has top and bottom. So um, a little bit obnoxious that there's no center value there, um, but that's okay, we can make it work. So we can see that the snack bar is indeed um, way down there, just where we told it to be. And if we go up to ultimately get the CDK global overlay wrapper element, this div with that class on it, then we can see that they are in fact using justify content and align items here um, whenever we update the prop values for vertical and horizontal position. So what does that mean? That means that we can target that particular class. So I'm gonna actually go back over here to my, um, my DOM, grab that class and come back over here to my code. So I'm going to target it. And so what we can do then is that we can actually directly target uh, whichever of those two uh, flex values that we want to control. So let's say I want to vertically center, then I can just say align items and I can say center. Now it's actually not gonna work quite yet and we'll see why. So I think it refreshed, so we should be good there, but we can see that it has not, um, it has not actually worked um, as, as we would hope. So we can see that our style was applied. I see it right there. But the interesting thing is that these two values um, have been applied via inline styling. So for whatever reason, Angular Material is using inline sty styling to uh, do the positioning on the snack bar. So that means that we just need to add this important value here. Um, there's no amount of specificity that I can get to with my class here that would allow me to actually um, be able to override that inline styling. So just kind of how it is. But you can see now that our snack bar is indeed vertically centered uh, just through that align items. So we can see that our align items is overwritten uh, with that value that we added there. So all good there. We could also control justify content. And once again, I'm gonna set it to a value of center and important. Important. There we go. So um, let's just check, make sure all is good there. So very good, we're, we're exactly where we want to be now. So another thing that we can do is if we want to add a, uh, like a top or a left value, we can also do that. Um, tricky thing is we do that in a different spot. So we were in the CDK global overlay wrapper. Now what we need to do is we need to go down to the actual div here and we need to add uh, we need to add values on this class. So right now I will just do that here in our dev tools. And I will say, let's say top of 200 PX. So it's not gonna take it. And it's because there is by default a position of static on here. Um, I don't know that we can even see it explicitly set in here, but what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to add a position of fixed. So there we go, we've got that fixed position on here now. So pretty cool, uh, just like that, we can mess around and really precisely style exactly where um, where our value, where our position is for our snack bar. I don't know that you'd necessarily use that maybe for the, hor maybe for the vertical position. The horizontal has so many options that uh, I just don't know that you'd ever want to use it, but there you have it in case you ever do decide that it's a cool thing that you wanna use. So what I'm gonna do is I will just put it, um, I could put it inside of this CDK, CDK global overlay wrapper, but I will just put it below CDK overlay pane. And I'll just go ahead and set that top of 200 PX here. And then our position of fixed. And unfortunately, we also need an important here in order for it to apply. So I was applying it on the inline styling, but since we're doing it via class now, then I'll actually need that. So anyway, there's all the positioning that I think you could possibly want. These two examples here will give you some things to play around with. So let's move on to our width. And so it's kind of interesting to try and set a full width on here. Um, 
Once again, we'll just dive into the DOM and we'll have to figure out the exact places that we need to target um, to get our styling to work how we want it to. Let me open that snack bar. So I'm just gonna leave the styling on here that we already have. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'll strip these off for now because we're actually gonna have to mess with the flex, the display flex, and so some of these values won't be applied properly anymore. So let's go ahead and strip them off. And let me come back and actually change this to, um, let's say, center for a horizontal and top for a vertical. Just get it somewhere a little bit easier. Um, so here we go. Back to the basics, to the default. So now what we're looking at is that um, we need to set a max width on this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out where width is currently being set. So let's see if we can find it here. Um, let's see. I think it's right around here somewhere. There we go. I see a max width right here. So we're pretty deep. There's a whole bunch of divs inside of here. You can see all these divs. We were messing around with this um, up here at this level, CDK Global Overlay Wrapper and CDK Overlay Pane. But now we're going to go down to this snack bar. And so what we want to do is we want to strip off this, this max width. And we actually want to set a max width here of, I'm just going to say 100%. For now, just to be safe, I'm going to set a width of 100%. For whatever reason, it seemed like this was necessary. Um, but I'm going to, so I'm going to set both of those just to see what happens. So I can see that we're not making any progress yet. So there's one more thing we need to do. Of course, I've researched all this and figured it out beforehand. So don't feel bad if, um, you know, it wasn't immediately apparent. But what we need to do is I know that sometimes having a display flex can affect the ability of components to expand and take up all the room. So what we can do is we can strip off that display flex. So we can see that between those two things, we are now getting somewhere. So here's what happens if I take off the width. And okay, it looks like we could take off the max width, but I actually kind of want to leave that on. Um, you know what, it looks like we can take that off. We can have width of 100% and that alone is overriding that max width. So we're good now. But it's kind of interesting to me that just having that max width on it is overriding, but um, it's just not taking over uh, the entire screen for some reason. So I don't know exactly why that is, but we can work with this. So anyway, going back over to our code, we need to do two things to make this work. The first is that we do, in fact, need to uh, have the CDK global overlay wrapper again. And here we're going to say, I'll just say display. Um, let's see. We don't, know, we don't want it to be flex anymore, but we don't want it to be none because I'd make this disappear. So I will say block. And maybe inline block would be better, but I'll stick with block for now. And the other thing that we need is I am going to go down and I am going to set the mat um, MDC, let's say snack bar container. So I'm gonna set that. And then inside of here, I'm going to say MDC snack bar underscore underscore surface kind of a strange class name not sure why there's two um why there are two underscores here but be aware that there are so i found in my research for this video that i had to be this specific i had to have this uh this class this selector wrapped inside of this other selector but between these two things i think we should be in a good place so there we go okay so that's kind of interesting um we're closer we'll dig into why that's not working quite right um, but anyway, one thing that I want to show is that, okay, that max width is still in place. So I th think we do need to target both of those. Um, anyway, so we can see that our width is being applied here. So I think we do need to add max width in order to just eliminate that, override it. Um, but anyway, I think that there may be some difference too in having width inside of this selector instead of width up here at the inline style. So let's add that additional value max width of 100% and it will auto refresh and we'll see if that gives us what we need here. So it turns out that we are being as specific but not more specific than the default styling for this max width. So what we need to do is we actually just need to move our styling code that we've written here. We'll just put it inside of our, um, our CDK global overlay wrapper. That's just gonna give it an additional degree of specificity so let's go over here and there we go, just like that, um, getting our um, styles just a little bit more specific is helping us to overcome the difficulty with that snack bar. Uh, here we are, MDC snack bar underscore underscore surface. 
um, having it not be quite specific enough to override the default styling. So here we can see the default styling is overridden. Here we can see um, that both of our styles are being applied with these three layers of nested selectors now. So very cool stuff. So anyway, you can set additional widths on here if you didn't want a width of 100%, you could do 90% or whatever. Um, so anyway, definitely some really cool stuff here. It really takes some effort sometimes to style the Angular Material snack bar, but sometimes you just got to dive really deep into the DOM and figure it out.